one of the Wildcats' leaders, Thorson has thrown for nearly 2,700 yards in a senior season in leading Northwestern to the Big Ten Championship game for the first time. Clayton, thanks for joining us this afternoon. If you could, give us some quick opening comments on playing in the Big Ten Championship game, and then we'll open it up yeah. for call, open up the call for media questions. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, through 12 games, we're, we, we've won the West Division, and so we, um, we're obviously real excited to be in the Big Ten Championship game for the first time. Um, especially with this group of guys, we've worked so hard after starting out one and three. Um, you know, winning a lot of games recently and getting in here. Um, you know, you know, we're excited to play a really good Ohio State team, a team that we saw last weekend um, beat a really good Michigan team. And so we got a lot of respect for them. But uh, we're excited for the game on Saturday and excited to be in Indianapolis. Thanks, Clayton. Let's open it up to the media questions at this time. If you'd like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. And your first question is from Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Clayton. Uh, what are your memories of the 2016 game against Ohio State? You guys obviously took them to the uh, limit then. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Um, you know, we took them pretty close to the edge there, and uh, we, we couldn't finish the job. I mean, I remember it was third and goal we didn't convert and so we ended up taking a field goal late in the game to make it 24 to 20 but um you know you know that was a really good team back then uh, that we were playing against and uh and you know we felt like um we had a chance there to win so we obviously were disappointed with that loss um but that gave us confidence moving forward just because how good they were at that time and i don't know how much you studied ohio state yet you, you did get a jump start because of uh you, know, you knew you were playing you knew you were going to be here uh, what are your impressions of Ohio State's defense, especially their pass defense? Yeah, they're they're very talented all around. You know, from linebackers, D line, and those, those DBs are pretty good. Um, and I think it starts up front with their D line. Um, you know, their D ends do a good job getting up field, and the, those D linemen get pressure as well. Um, the linebackers are solid all the way through, and those DBs make a lot of good plays on the ball. Um, you know, you see the ball in the air, and those guys are hitting it out of guys' hands. Um, you got a lot of speed back there as well. We got a lot of respect for this defense, um, and we know what they're capable of. All right. Thank you. Yep. The next question from Edward Ashcroft, ESPN. Yeah, Clay, you know, staying with Ohio State defense. When you look at film, though, what do you see that you think is an advantage for you guys on offense against that unit? Um, you know, you know, I think um, you know as we go throughout the week, uh, we always continue to find. Advantages versus different uh, versus different teams, but this team is pretty talented. Um, this, this Ohio State defense, and so um, you know, I, I think we just got to play um, play our game and and uh, you know kind of kind of see how the game um, as, as the game gets going, where we can continue to attack them. Um, because like we said before, there's not a whole lot of holes in their defense. Um, you know, kind of all the way through, they're pretty consistently um, talented players, and, and they do their jobs well. So, so you know, we will uh, we'll diagnose those things and, and we'll figure it out. Statistically, they they haven't had the year that they wanted on defense. When you've looked at them, what hasn't worked at times for them? What? Why do you think they have struggled? You know, I'm um, you know I'm not I'm not really sure. Um, you know, I think we've we've seen a lot of different things from them. Um, but what we have seen is when they when they really turn it on and and um, and are in tight situations. I think they make the plays they need to. That's why they're eleven and one, um, because they make plays down the stretch. Um, so we, we see the talent they have, and we know um, when they need to. You know, we've seen them make those plays time and time again. And so even us seeing on film is a little surprising at times to um, to see some teams throw some points on them. But um, but because we know how much talent they have on that side of the ball, so, so we got a lot of respect. For them. Thank you. And once again, if you'd like to ask a question, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. And your next question is from Van Hope, 11 Warriors. Hey, Clayton. Uh, you guys having clinched the Big Ten West a couple weeks ago, Pat Fitzgerald was saying that he was preparing for Ohio State, or preparing for this game, rather, for the past couple weeks. Did you watch any film of Ohio State before this week, and were you kind of able to start preparing for this game early because you had clinched the Big Ten West title? No, I, I have not watched any Ohio State film um, until Saturday night. So we were preparing for Minnesota and Illinois. 
what's this like for you to be in this situation and be able to play in this game, you know, being a four year starter, what kind of this journey been like for you to go across, across these four years and, and finally get to the Big Ten championship game now? Yeah, it's been a great journey. And, you know, I just think about all the different guys I've played with. Um, and so many of the guys who can't be here with us uh, going to Indianapolis, guys who have graduated and are in the NFL now. Um, it's been a great journey. Um, you know, I, I would have loved to get to this point um, a couple of years earlier, um, but we're here now. And so it's been a great journey. And, um, you know, this is a great way to finish it off. Thanks, Clayton. Yep. Sure. Thank you. Your next question is from Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. Paul, thank you very much. Hi, Clayton. I was just wondering if you had to describe uh, Coach Fitzgerald's approach and why you guys, obviously y'all have some uh, uh, some challenges sometimes from a recruiting standpoint, yet y'all put quality teams on the field, and this year, of course, you won the Big Ten West. But what is it about Coach Fitzgerald's approach that allows you guys to, uh, for one of another you know, term, reach your maximum? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great question. You know, I think Coach Fitzgerald recruits guys who he believes are, are really good players. Um, you know, it's not always what the recruiting sites say that forces him to offer a guy. Um, I think he recruits guys who fit Northwestern and guys who he knows will want to come out and play and give it, give it their all for him um, and for the guys on this team. And so I think because he went to Northwestern and was a player, also went to school here, obviously, um, I think that also helps a lot because he can relate to us and um, he knows what it's like to, to go here and to play here and to be successful, which is what the most important thing is. And he was very successful here. And so I think, I think that resonates with us and that allows us to play you know, to our best um, for him and for these guys around us. And the other thing, you know, you guys pass as much as you run, you know what I mean? It's not like y'all were sitting there in a cubby hole waiting for the fourth quarter. <laughs> uh, how would you describe y'all's offense to this point? Because I think you're – your maximum points this year, I think, have been 34 a couple of times. I may be wrong, but how would you describe y'all's approach offensively? Yeah, you know, um, I think uh, early on, um, you know, we came out and we were like, all right, we're going to be balanced offense. And, um, you know, and, and we were, um, especially with Jeremy back there. And then when he had to uh, medically retire, I think we laid more on the pass game there for a few games. Um, I think we had maybe 40 yards rushing over the course of two games. And then, and then when Isaiah Bowser started to really step up, um, you know, I think we became more balanced. And so I'd say we're pretty balanced. Um, you know, we're a run and a pass offense, and um, I think we can we can really spread out a defense and diagnose it well. And, you know, I think our coaches do a great job getting us in good positions, but um, I think our run game has really excelled in the past few weeks, and, and our pass game has just, just been really efficient as well. Okay, thanks, man. Thank you. Your next question is from Evan Allen, USA Today. Yeah, I want to ask you another question about Coach uh, Fitzgerald. Like, what is the? Uh, how would you describe uh, him as a coach, and how much does his personality sort of play in how the way you guys play? Yeah, he, he's a really energetic coach, and I think that feeds over to us as you see our team playing with a lot of energy. Our sidelines got a lot of energy. Um, you know, he really stresses that as well. You know, he stresses we got to play hard for each other. Um, and um, I think that really carries over. And and just the fact that he played here and he knows what it's like to be here, I think that um, that helps us as well and it allows us to buy into what he's saying. What's his message? What has been his message thus far uh, in the early going this week about, about this game? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he just told us this morning um, to do what we do. You know, there's the reason we've won games is because we are who we are and we go out and execute our game plan. Um, you know, he, he's saying you don't have to do anything extraordinary. Be yourself and go play your game. And so that's what we got to do. Um, you know, obviously a very, very talented Ohio State team, and, and, um, and we got to play well in order to come out victorious. And your next question from Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Ms. Clayton, when you were one and three and having lost to Akron, how did you guys kind of hold it together and how did you regroup as a team? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we kind of came together. Um, we held a you know a few players only meetings, um, you know, because we weren't satisfied. We knew that that's not that's not our style of play. You know, we uh, were a much better team 
um, that our record showed. And so I, I think credit to the guys in our locker room. We stayed together, and uh, we weren't po- pointing fingers. We were going out there and executing for each other, and, and we knew we had the talent to do it. We just had to go do it, you know? And I think there's, um, there's definitely – there's definitely a point where you got to sit back and go, okay, what what's going on here? And we had to regroup there when we started out one and three, and um, and we did, and we came back together. And unfortunately, that's something that we've had to do these past few years is you know, we've had some rough starts. So, um, you know, I think it just came down to guys making that decision and uh, and really playing for each other. And for you to get to the championship game after that start, how how satisfying is that? Yeah, it's, I think it's very satisfying. Um, you know, I think the most satisfying thing would be to win the championship game. Um, you know, we're not just happy just to be here. Um, you know, we, we want to go out there and win it. All right. All right. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you. Clayton, thanks again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in Indianapolis this weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. And next on the teleconference is Northwestern senior guard Tommy Dole. Dole has been an anchor on the Wildcats' offensive line for the last three seasons and has helped the Wildcats to three consecutive victories heading into the Big Ten Championship game. Tommy, thanks for joining us. If you could, give us some quick opening comments on Saturday's game, and then we'll open the call for media questions. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I think it's just us being at this point is a testament to the character of this group and just the way that we've faced adversity and have stuck together and um, just made a decision that we're going to come in and work each and every day to get one day better. And when you put all that together, um, you've got something special. So we've got a real brotherhood on the team. That's one of my favorite things about our program and the team that we have. Um, It's just the way that we play for each other. And now we're so excited for this opportunity um, to play Ohio State, a great football team, and um, showcase who we are as a program, who we are as a team, and achieve one of our great program goals. Thank you. Thanks, Tommy. Let's open it up for media questions at this time. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star up and the number one on your telephone keypad. And your first question is for Bill Rubinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, Tommy, can you give me your impressions of Ohio State's defensive line and the challenge that they will present to you guys? Yeah, they're an extremely athletic group. Um, you know, everyone on there has a lot of talent, so there's no one that you can – fall asleep on. So I think what's going to be important for us is just um, sticking to our fundamentals um, because, you know, our fundamentals are designed to handle uh, movement and bringing our style of football that we've been playing. Um, we've just been getting better at running the ball because of the attitude that we've brought every time we hear a run play called. So um, just doing what we do, but doing it well. Everyone's got to play their best football. And fortunately, that's um, the direction we've been heading as an offensive line. And you mentioned the run game has struggled badly at times this year. What got it back on track? Well, I think partly credit to our coaches for finding the right schemes to put us in and finding the best ways to utilize Isaiah's strength and our strength as a group. Um, but I think that, you know, up front as an offensive line, you take pride in running the football, and that's something that we haven't let go of. So the times when we weren't running the ball, it wasn't a question of whether or not we're good enough. It was, guys, what do we have to do to live up to what we know we're capable of? Because we're a group that's been playing together for a long time. We have a lot of experience. Um, so, And it also comes to you know the Tuesday, Wednesday practices. How physical are we going to be? How hard are we going to be working? And that adds up until you get a great, um, inside zone run or something that breaks away. And you know that that's the product of all the work that's done into it. Right. Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> Again, if you'd like to ask a question, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. Your next question is from Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Hi, Tommy. Uh, Coach Fitzgerald said that he had spent some time the past couple of weeks looking ahead to the Big Ten championship game because you guys had already clinched the Big Ten West title. Did you look at all uh, ahead to this game in advance over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, so what we did as a group and as a leadership, um, the leadership on our team was we weren't trying to completely ignore the fact that we had the Big Ten championship coming up. I don't think that'd be realistic. Um, 
but we still had some very important games ahead of us. You know, it was we wanted to sweep the West Division, had to beat our rival Illinois. So we couldn't be looking past it, but instead what we did was um, just take on the identity of a championship football team and said, you know, we're going to be a championship team, so we're going to win when we're on the field. So win our one-on-one matchups, um, beat the teams that we play against. And so we, we had in mind what was ahead of us, but I think that actually fueled us to play our best um, with the games that were in front of us because ultimately, you know, I mean, you hear this a lot, it's kind of a cliche, but the goal for every college football team is to go 1-0 and each week. And when you're starting to look past that, you get into trouble. So, yeah, like I said, we use the motivation championship game to motivate us to be our best every day. What's it like for you as a senior who's been here to – have gone through the past four years and to now be in this position to, to finally compete in the Big Ten Championship game? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of gratitude. Um, grateful for um, the group of seniors that have been with every step of the way. Grateful for the coaching staff that's invested so much into us. Grateful to God for giving me the, this opportunity and these abilities. Um, but, you know, it's something that we've been um, working towards, and it's pretty cool and something you've been working towards for five years is right in front of you. I remember when I first committed to Northwestern um, way back when in high school, I one of the first things I did was text Clayton, who I'd gotten in a little bit during the recruiting process, and said, hey, Clayton, just committed to Northwestern. Let's go win a Big Ten championship. And so to come to this point where um, it's right in front of us is very exciting. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you. Again, if you want to ask a question, simply press star one. Your next question is from Tim Mike, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, Tom, I was wondering, what, what explains you guys uh, basically had that narrow loss to, to uh, Akron, and then you have a narrow loss for, to a certain extent to Notre Dame? <laughs> and uh, what, what, what just kind of explains kind of what y'all have been through this year from the standpoint how did, of, of maybe character building, for want of another word, but how close you were to maybe a, a really – you know what I mean? A really big time, great season. Yeah, definitely a char- character building experience. Um, I think it was just this attitude and this belief in who we are as a football team and as a program. And, you know, after the acting game, it wasn't us questioning, wow, maybe we're not as good as we thought we were. Maybe we don't have what it takes to achieve our goals. It was, okay, we're not living up to what we know we can do. So what's it going to take? And I think that. Um, our group of seniors just didn't flinch. Um, we stuck to what we knew it was going to take, which is working every day. And, yeah, it's going to be um, a regret of mine for a long time um, that we didn't win those games. You know, anyone can look back on their career and have things they wish they could act. Um, but yeah. we knew we had to look at what we had ahead of us. And I think that's what it took. And, and when your coach stood up, uh, I was going to say on the soapbox, I don't know what he was standing on, you know, but after the Minnesota game and sort of said, you know, people weren't giving you guys enough credit for one of another term. I'm paraphrasing there, though. I don't know. I don't know if you guys were aware of that, but what, what did it do for you guys as a, as, as a group? Uh, and, you know, to, to know that your coach felt that way, but did y'all feel that way too, if you follow my drift? Yeah, I think – Something about our group is that we're always motivated by playing for each other. Um, that I, I think I've learned over my time here that you know we're not going to be always the talk of media and the national conversation. Um, and so it, it's something that it didn't really mean too much to us what was happening outside because we knew that it was about what um, what we did inside the program. But at the same time, you know, everyone who's playing football at this level takes a lot of pride in what they want to do and they want to get um, respect for the things they have done. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's just something that also motivates us uh, every day. to just be our path. Um, and that's all we can do. Thank you, man. Thank you. Tommy, thanks again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in Indianapolis. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. And our final player on the teleconference today is Northwestern sophomore linebacker Patty Fisher.
Fisher is second on the Wildcats in tackles with 92 to go along with three sacks and three forced fumbles to lead the Northwestern defense. Patty, thanks for joining us. If you could, give us a quick opening comment on playing in Saturday's game, and then we'll open the call for media questions. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, you know, I'm excited to play on Saturday. Um, we're going get, to uh, get to work this week and, um, you know, watch watch some film. And, um, you know, I, I'm really excited just to just be in this stage and uh, to play for a championship. So. Thanks, Patty. Let's open up for questions from the media this time. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. And your first question is from Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Patty. Uh, um, I don't know how much you've been able to watch of the Ohio State-Michigan game or just Ohio State in general, but how explosive they are. What kind of a challenge is that going to be for you guys? Yeah, you know, they're a very talented um, offense. They're a very talented team uh, in general. Very explosive and dynamic on offense. It's going to be challenging for us to, you know, carry over our fundamentals from practice to uh, to the game. You know, we're going to have to be real sharp on all of our fundamentals and, um, you know, tackle well. we got to tackle well and uh, take the ball away. So, you know, we're going to be stressing, stressing that this week and, uh, you know, we're stressing it all uh, all season. So it's going to be, uh, you know, very similar to the last, uh, last several weeks of preparation in terms of uh, just carrying over our fundamentals and uh, preparing for this Saturday. And how tough is it going to be to deal with their speed? Because you can't simulate like that with a scout team. How are you going to kind of prepare for that? Yeah, it's going to be very tough. Um, you know, uh, you can't have a, a very, uh, you know, 100% look from your scout team. You know, that's just uh, that's just really unheard of just to replicate that and uh, their skill that they have on offense. So it's uh, it's going to be just a, a real, real important and uh, for us to, uh, you know, know, know the game plan inside and out and know uh, – uh, everything up and down um, for their uh, for their offense and um, all of the all of their tendencies and whatnot. Thank you, Patty. Your next question is from Edward Ashcroft, ESPN. Yeah, Patty. We can look at the Ohio State quarterback Blaine Hassers. I mean, how do you stop him <laughs> defensively? Oh uh, yeah, you know, hopefully that our, uh, our our defensive coordinator is going to come up with a great plan to stop him and then put us in the in the right position to, you know, make plays. So we just got to trust in uh, in his game plan and just execute the game plan. You know, that's all that uh, that's all that we can do and all that we can ask for. Um, he's a very talented quarterback and uh, he can swing the rock like no other. Um, you know, he's got great talent. So we're gonna we're gonna have to be uh, really sharp on everything and in this game plan this week. How much more difficult is it for a defense when you're preparing for a quarterback who throws so well but can also run so well? Yeah, you know, it's very difficult. Um, quarterbacks who are um, runners as well as throwers are, you know, just as hard as to stop. Um, they're uh, extremely talented. And it just adds a whole new dynamic to the offense. And, you know, you have to have one more guy count for the quarterback run, too. Thank you. Your next question is from Mitch Dicey, Associated Press. Hey, Patty. Uh, just a, a little bit more about Dwayne Haskins. Um, have you been able to watch him at all this year and track uh, his progress as he's piling up these touchdown passes? And then again, as he started just a few games ago, started showing those flashes of uh, being able to run. Yeah, you know, I haven't really been keeping up with him. You know, I've just been focused on this game and uh, what we had at stake. I'll take a look at his stats later on in the week if I if I need to. Um, but other than that, I respect the guy. Uh, I respect him as a player as well. Um, you know, going into the game, I myself and this team knows that he's very talented and can hurt us with his arm and his leg. So it's going to be important to stop him. And, uh, you know, we'll take a, take a deeper look and analyze him uh, further on in this week. Good. Thank you, sir. Again, if you'd like to ask a question, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. Your next question is from Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Hi, Patty. You guys have held five of your last six opponents to 17 points or less. What do you think has been the keys for you guys in this second half of the season to really be able to perform at that level? Yeah, you know, we've made a lot of mistakes in the first half of the season, which has translated to, um, you know, a lot of success in the second half of the season. 
So uh, just really just fundamentally executing our job and doing each of our jobs is to the best of our ability and not doing too much is, has really been the success of this defense. So I think if we do that and, um, you know, make plays, then we're, we're going to be good. And how special is it for you to just get to be a part of Northwestern playing in the Big Ten Championship game for the first time ever? Yeah, it's really special. You know, coming in as a freshman, we went 6-6. Six and six. Um, And, you know, we ever since we've been setting the standards, uh, you know, much higher, you know, we've been always preaching about the Big Ten Championship and winning the Big Ten West and, and, and even and even more bigger goals. So we're uh, – we're working, you know. It's been it's been a, it's been a great few years here, and to see this program grow and and um, you know ch- change the culture is, is awesome, and it means uh, means a lot to me. Thanks, Patty. Yep. Again, if you'd like to ask a question, simply press star then the number one on your telephone keypad. Your next question is from Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. Well, thank you very much. Hey, uh, how much? Uh, I don't know. Is it meant? To you, from an inspiration standpoint, if that's the right word, to play for a coach who played your position. <laughs> but not only that, uh, when he was there, they won the Big Ten Championship, you know, a couple of times. And uh, just the belief, I guess, that he has in the program. And I, you know, what I'm getting to here is what, what makes Coach Fitzgerald uh, special from your vantage point? Yeah, I think what makes him special is just everything he has to offer to the program to his staff and to his players, he, he, he's more than willing to offer it and give it up. You know, he's 100% invested and just giving it all he all he has and expects the same out of us. So seeing him do that pushes us to push ourselves even more and expect uh, expect great things out of us too. So, you know, he really sets the bar and expects us to follow follow his lead and, and uh, perform and execute. So, uh, you know, he really pushes us each and every way throughout the whole um, throughout, the, throughout the whole week and just throughout the whole off season as well, you know, he uh, he just he really sets the bar high. And expects a lot of that of. And, and for you personally to know that, you know, when he was there, I mean, they they won the Big Ten championship. You know what I mean? They weren't just talking about it. Uh, uh, yeah. To know that he's done it does it does that add to the I don't know, the belief factor that in fact it can be done if you follow my drift. Of course, you know, I, I think it can be done. You know, we have to just to go out and just play our game, play our style of ball, and execute fundamentally, and, um, you know, we got to make plays. Um, but, yeah, no, no doubt in my mind that it can't happen. Hey, thanks, man. Yep, thanks. And once again, if you'd like to ask a question, simply press star after the number one on your telephone keypad. Your next question is from Dan Murphy, ESPN. Hey, Patty. Um, Clayton just mentioned that there was some kind of uh, player-only type meetings and stuff when you guys turned things around after the non-conference season. I'm wondering if there was a, a turning point that you guys felt that uh, when you went from having the rough start to believing that uh, this was a team that could get to Indianapolis and, and play for a Big Ten title. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, we just kind of you know, changed our mindset and how we were going to approach each and every day of preparation um, throughout the week. You know, we came in just with the mindset to grind. And, you know, not, not worry about uh, the past or what's in front, you know. And we're not going to sit there and, you know, let let our past and our, our failures um, dictate our future, right? So we just came in with, a, you know, a really a really great mindset to approach and attack each day and uh, just prepare for victory each week. When did you feel that really started paying off? Um, you know, that definitely happened in the locker room. Um, you know, guys just holding each other accountable. Um, you know, guys picking each other up when we weren't doing or playing well. Um, you know, just the accountability factor really played a big part in uh, us turning the season around. Thank you. And we have time for one final question. Your final question is from Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Patty, just what was your approach like the last couple of weeks? with knowing that you guys were going to be playing in this Big Ten championship game, but also having to finish out your last couple games of the regular season? Yeah, I think, um, you know, my approach and, and the rest of this team's approach was to just keep doing the things that we were, we were doing in the past. You know, we weren't going to change anything. Uh, we weren't going to do anything more or do anything less. Um, you know, if it's not broke, you don't need to fix it. Um, you know, we just came in every day. And, uh, you know, we had our routine, and uh, we just did everything we did following up to the success of the season and uh, did it 100% with 
a with a great championship mindset and great championship mentality. So, thanks, Patty. Yep. Thank you, Patty. Thanks again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in Indianapolis this weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. See ya. And that completes the Big Ten Football Championship Game Players Teleconference. I'd like to thank the players and media for joining us today. As a reminder, Northwestern and Ohio State will meet in the 2018 Big Ten Football Championship Game presented by Discover at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday, December 1st at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. The game will be broadcast nationally on Fox and Compass Media Networks, with the winner earning the Amos Alonzo Stag Championship Trophy and the chance to play in one of the six bowls that comprise the college football playoff, including the Rose Bowl. Thank you for joining us today.